Welcome. Uh, this is uh, Morten from English TV. Uh, I have the pleasure of, again, the pleasure of talking to my very good friend, Diego Diaz, who now works for HP and you have been involved in a secret project for so long time that I was actually a little bit upset that you wouldn't tell me anything just because I didn't have an NDA with you. Damn it, Diego. But now uh, at DScoop, you announced uh, an MRS or a AV, AGV or a, a little kind of robot. Was there any interest in that one when you presented it for the first time in the market? And what sure. is it? So, so it's it's a AMR, and there there's slight differences be, between an AMR. A, a, an AMR and an AGV, and uh, there, there's a lot of stuff on the web on that. But uh, but yes, it's it's an AMR, and yes, we got a, a lot of interest. It's more more than you know two two dozen uh, customers that were e eager to know more about it and jump right into it. Um, We had to actually a few, mm. few of them come running to us. Say, well, how, how fast can we sign up? How fast can we get one on our floor? So I'd say we, we had a very, very positive response. And it, it's showing that um, as much as uh, some of the larger customers out there already are into robotics, that um, the majority of the industry is now ready for this conversation. So I think mm. we're hitting the right thing at the mm. right time. Mm. Um, I mean, um, obviously, you have worked with that uh, machine for some time, and of course, uh, I know how passionate you are when you when you dig into things. Um, I was just wondering when you when you build an AMR and and basically, uh, and for people that doesn't know what it is, it's a kind of like an automated device that brings pallets or goods between uh, different locations. And 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 I'm just I'm just I'm just wondering because if you have that type of machine. Are people looking into this because they can save money in having uh, less labor, or is it because it's difficult to get labor or combination, or what? Why, why are people so interested in this machine? Sure. So you know the the pandemic really changed things in the labor market, as you know, and um, it, it was not just a case of uh, labor scarcity; it's also a case of labor costs went up in a huge way. Where you know, if you'd asked me. Five ten years ago, I've always been interested in robots. But five, five ten years ago, you know, when I had my own shops, I was looking at ways to, you know, how how do I uh, how do I automate things? How do I bring robots to everything? And I'll tell you, the ROI ten years ago just wasn't it. It, it, it didn't make sense. Labor was mm. too inexpensive, and uh, robots, especially batteries, um, were not efficient mm. enough. Oh, okay. And that that is changed remarkably but one of the other things that left the market during uh, during the pandemic is also skill level um, so even when you can find people finding people that know the print industry and uh, know you know operating a press is not a easy task um, you know being a mm -hmm. mechanic on these presses is uh, not an easy task and um, that's why a lot of what hp is doing is focused around how to make these presses easier to operate and more efficient and more autonomous and allow the skilled people that you have to do more. And that's certainly where we wanted to bring these robots in is it's how do we empower the employees that you have to do much more. Mm. Uh, you mentioned it yourself because I mean, uh, when we met each other for the, for the first time years ago, uh, you worked in a huge print shop and basically uh, was very much into I would say anything that could make your shop smarter and 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 do all these kind of things. Um, and as you mentioned, maybe the price point was not the right or the RI was not right. But I can't help think about that. Um, we have, I think, a guy that we both know, Henrik Christiansen, that talks about robot all the time. I th actually think he is a robot, but that is maybe not a question. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, because one of the things that we uh, often I often talk to him about is that. When you buy industrial robots, they are not the software is not made for our industry. Basically, if you are, let's say, a car manufacturer, you buy the robot, then you have uh, uh, people that actually program it to the purpose of of a car manufacturer, for example, right? And in the printing industry, it it it, it would have been the same if it wasn't because of uh, HP investing in in this uh, framework for the software uh, to be used specifically for for printing equipment. So is that also a deal breaker when it comes to having robots that now 
you don't have like a huge, uh, let's say, unknown budget for implementation after you have bought the machine itself or, uh, or how you know, do you that, think of that? that? That was really the plan when I was exploring this and I was looking at um, all the different robotics companies out there of who, who do we want to partner with? Because certainly, you know, at HP, we're, we have plenty of R&D, we have a lot of scientists, but why, why reinvent the wheel as far as we, we wanted to work with someone that had a proven track record and had already taken lessons learned and could bring their expertise into the industry so that uh, we didn't have to learn to be robotics experts. We could teach a robotics company mm. about print and really utilize the strengths of both. But when I was researching um, all the companies out there, um, unfortunately, I found what you find in a lot of industries, which is um, there's a lot of a lot of Chinese made robots that are decent robots, but going back to who actually manufactures them versus distributors and all the different layers that you get when those Chinese robots make it to uh, North America or to Europe or um, in other areas. It's often layers of companies that are distributing someone else's stuff and repackaging it and rebranding it. Um, and mm. the the issue with that comes with expertise and implementation with a, in a lot of those cases you can get a relatively cheap robot from china but you're getting a robot in a box and it shows up on your floor and then it's mm. okay now now you got to figure out how to use it how mm. to integrate it um, mm. and that takes an incredible amount of skill to integrate these and to really make them useful um, picking up a pallet from one point point to another because you know you you made a very simple plan uh, that's not that useful. That that requires almost a person to oversee everything that the robot is doing. So at that point, you're not really saving labor. You're not really saving activity. It's it's intelligence. Building intelligence into the system is where you start to see savings. And that's that's what we believed that HP and our partner MovieJo Robotics could really deliver. There's also another thing that I believe is maybe. Uh extremely exciting, interesting for, for people to think of. And that is uh, with the installed base of uh, printers that HP has in the market. It must also be very exciting because uh, HP has always monitored all its printers in the network and basically know the volume, knows the paper sizes, knows uh, everything that gives you some kind of, let's say, uh, background for helping your customers and saying that where are the bottlenecks and i guess that that transporting paper to and from a uh, a device is one of the bottlenecks and and probably more bottlenecks can be identified and um, we will talk about the machine and and a little bit more in a second but i have a question and just because i want people to understand so when you started with hp and you started this project here is it two years ago now or one and a half years something like that yeah when when you started a project like this, what was the initial objective? Was that first identifying the need, or were you pretty certain on what was needed uh, from the from quite from sure. the beginning? So when I came into HP and I took on this role as product manager of automation uh, globally, my my first step was let's talk to all the customers. So that that's where we we went out and we talked to everyone, whether they were Indigo customers, page-wide customers, uh, large format customers, and did a survey of dozens of customers, small ones, large ones, and really just tried to understand without uh, without having a preconceived idea of what they were, uh, what the issue was. It was really listening to say, what are your challenges? What, what are you facing right now? And looking across all of those different industries, commercial labels and packaging, what what are the things that everyone is struggling, that everyone is suffering with? And certainly um, the labor challenges rose very quickly to the top. That's that's something that we saw everyone mm -hmm. struggling with. And and part of that uh, as well, you know, goes back to the shift of kind of the old guard of labor to Gen Z coming on board. And, you know, does Gen Z really want to work manufacturing? Do they want to work night shifts? Um, these are these were challenges that came up that we heard across the board from all different segments, small shops, mm -hmm. big shops. But having, uh, let's say, uh, if I, if I should, uh, uh, 
tissue a little bit if I should say that it's just an I mean Diego it's just an automated pallet lifter right <laughs> I was just wondering why why this I mean because a lot of of uh, not a lot but many others are looking into robot arms uh, some are looking different stages in the in the value chain and I'm just wondering why did you pick the 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 the, the transportation between between machines so, and that and that part that the, the, that your machine uh, sure. addressed so um so we didn't just pick that. I, I will say that uh, um, the the AMR driving around on the shop floor, operating the press uh, semi autonomously, that was definitely the star of the show at D Scoop, and that will probably be the star of the show again at uh, Drupa. Um, everyone loves watching them move around and operate the machine on its own. But uh, this was really a full ecosystem. So we brought on multiple partners. So we did bring in a robot arm partner as well. Um, we have the AMR partner, um, and we've set about building our own data collection solution to expand uh, mm -hmm. print OS, print beat. Um, and really what mm -hmm. this is about is an interconnected ecosystem where, and an open one at that. So one, one we really wanted to make sure that we could meet customers where they are, and that means uh, integrating with their MIS systems. That means integrating with their shop floors. One of the key things about how we designed the AMR and how we've designed the robot arm solutions is we want to work on the equipment that customers have. We want to work on their shop floors as they are so that they're not having to redesign everything for robots. So we wanted to build small footprints and APIs that are open for everything so that we can really interconnect and integrate with all platforms. But that is uh, super smart. So basically, with uh, PrintBeat, PrintOS, AMRs, robot arms, basically, it's kind of let's say a, a printing industry operating system for ro robots that yes. you have built, right? It's uh, you know, don't don't get me wrong. Um, Movie Joe Robotics, when we chose them as a partner, they they make an incredible robot, and that's part of why we chose them as a partner. Mm -hmm. But the real truth is, is we chose them. Um, they, they were as much a software company as they were a hardware company. And that's, it's about the interconnections that you can make. Um, the fact that they were willing to, uh, create APIs that would work with ours. And we were able to create APIs so that we can have the presses and the MIS systems speak to each other and speak to the robots because having a robot come and get you paper when you've run out of paper. Oh, that's not so great because now you have the same problem. You just roboticize the same problem as far as the, the biggest reason why presses <laughs> sit idle is because an operator has gone to go get paper or to go deliver something. Mm. So if, yeah. if the press is now idle because a robot is going to get paper, you didn't solve the problem. You just roboticized it. And that's what you get yeah. from most robotics yeah. manufacturers. Yeah. For us to do proactive thinking, so that the robot is getting the paper before the press ever runs out and bringing it over to the press so that it's ready to load at the exact second when the press runs out. That is mm -hmm. the intelligence that increases efficiency. That's doing more than just roboticizing the press. Is, is that the part, I mean, because when you talk also so openly about your partnership uh, uh, with the robots manufacturer, is that also because, I mean, uh, in a world that getting more and more complex, basically we can't be the best at everything. But does that really mean that 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 since you're focusing so much on the integration to the printing part, that the real value for a customer buying this machine and based on your recommendation and based on your integration, things like that, that basically the t the software that basically makes sure that it works together with the presses and understand how to do things, that is where the value for a customer. So if, if let's say in the future you can basically interface with any customer, basically they could buy any robot, I guess, right? Yes, yes. In, in, principle, in, in, I mean, in principle, and yeah. from that level, we are partnering with other robotics companies as well for things like, you know, the the robot that we built is built for the production floor. It's built to drive in and out of equipment yeah, and yeah, work yeah. on a small production floor, but it's not built to do things like go mm. into a warehouse and do high lifts. So absolutely, the software mm -hmm. can drive other robots to do those other things too. And that's, that's the idea is building mm -hmm. this interconnected ecosystem where all the devices are working together. Mm -hmm. 
If uh, you look at uh, these uh, AMRs uh, and you also see some of these uh, extremely nice films from Amazon Warehouse where you see all these uh, uh, devices uh, operating a shop floor, um, your machine, does that require, you know, magnetic stripes in the floor or camera system? How does it, how, how does it know where to go and, and how safe it, is it also in relation to uh, to uh, to working with people uh, on the show. Sure. So uh, one of the fun things at DScoop was, you know, we didn't put up uh, curtains or barriers or anything. So we were giving press demos while the uh, while the robot was operating the press, and uh, we did that very intentionally because we wanted people to walk in front of the robot. We wanted uh, we wanted everyone to see that even when it's carrying its large load, even when it's moving uh, at high rates of speed. Um, that it's not going to run anyone down, that it's uh, safety is always the top priority. And we built it to work on an active mm -hmm. shop floor. And part of working on mm -hmm. an active shop floor means that you can't have all of these navigational aids, like, you know, the magnetic strips or QR codes put on the floor, th things like that. Those get obstructed, those get destroyed, um, mm -hmm. they get run over, they, that it's not realistic for a shop to maintain that. And we really wanted to be able to make this so that you can drop this anywhere that a normal employee is using a pallet jack, then this robot can go. Mm -hmm. And it uses the same kind of navigation that we do. It looks at the area and makes decisions. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's where an AMR mm -hmm. really excels. So it uses LiDAR, like a self-driving car, to learn its environment and mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. its environment. And we even have special sensors that make us a little different than all the other uh, uh, LiDAR driven AMRs out there because those can get fooled and they can get lost. And we have a couple special sensors, uh, proprietary sensors that keep it from ever getting lost. Mm. Um, sounds very exciting. I do understand why you're so excited about this project. And I also understand why people from this group find this interesting. Um, can't help think about because I mean visiting a lot of printing companies. Both you and and, and I have done that uh, during the years. Uh, uh, I think that one of the obstacles is probably that a lot of, let's say at least mid-sized printing companies have limited floor space. Right? <laughs> is that uh, maybe the biggest limitation in getting these uh, uh, widely spread out to many customers, or, or where do you see the bottlenecks from a sales sure. perspective? So it, it's it's actually one of the biggest reasons to get these. Um, because we, I, I'm sure you see it whenever you walk into a commercial shop, you'll see a press and it's got walls of paper all around it and walls of jobs all around it. And this is valuable production space. You know, the, this is where if you're going to grow, where you're going to put your next press, where you, uh, everybody knows that uh, how expensive it is to, to move a shop. Uh, you know, these are big pieces of machinery, all the presses, all the bindery equipment. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to grow and pick up and go to another location, it's a very expensive thing. I know when I've done that with my companies, half the times, I just buy all new equipment, put that in the, in the new facility and then shut the old one down. And, uh, you know, that, that's why we, have, why we Europeans love Americans, you know, so that's why <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's easier to do that than to move everything. So be, because of that, we want to, one of the biggest ROIs that you can get is actually by not moving and by not moving and by growing within your own space. But how do you grow within your own space? It's about freeing up space. So when you have those pallets of paper and you yeah. have jobs scattered all around your production area, by having the robot able to bring paper just in time, just as you need it, and to also remove jobs just in time, just as you need it, it means that you don't have to keep these massive mm -hmm. staging areas that become permanent mm -hmm. staging areas uh, in your shop. So you free up mm -hmm. so much more space, you can grow and you can expand and stay in the same building. Mm -hmm. Get it. Uh, Diego, um, <clears throat> as you said, uh, APIs, uh, open APIs, and uh, which is, of course, uh, I think that in a, in, in a world where you also navigated yourself uh, previously when you were a free man and not in, in, involved with a vendor, uh, you, knew, uh, you know how important that, that freedom was, especially for companies that really want to integrate these things. Uh, one thing I can't help think about, and that is uh, maybe that is addressed through the APIs, or maybe even addressed by by print OS, but what about let's say collaboration with other cohorts? I mean, because let's say that you have a let's say that you have an MBO uh, folding machine with uh, 
a, a, a Cobra stack on it, for example. And then you want to use that also together with your AMR. And basically, then you deliver it to something that has a, let's say, a third type of, of equipment. Is that something that that you guys, when you develop these kind of technologies, you know, take into consideration? Or are you trying to fight over the, the let's say, ownership of the no, ecosystems? No, that, uh, again, um, part of the main thought here is to meet customers with where they are. And if they've already invested in another system, that's it's unrealistic to think that someone is going to you know, throw away their investment in another system. And we, we really, unless they move yeah. to a new building, of course. <laughs> but we, we, we really built everything to, to meet customers where they are and to integrate and to work with it and to add value um, with these other systems. And one of the advantages that we have as HP is we have so many partners. And that, that meant that of course, when we were initially coming up with uh, these ideas and these concepts, one of the first things we did was reach out to our partners. So, um, things like mm. production beat, uh, when, when that actually releases for, uh, for sale, we'll already have several of these integrations with our partners in place. Um, and that's, again, mm. we've been thinking about that since day one. Mm. Um, you have, you, you, of course you won't say it directly, but I mean, when you say about partners and collaboration, I take that, that let's say that you have an offset machine and you have a, an Indigo machine. I mean. Is it at all possible to make this integrate into, let's say, using your robots for, <laughs> let's, I mean, just a crazy example. You pre-print something on a, on a offset machine and you re add print on an, on an indigo. Maybe not the best <laughs> example, but just as an example, will you be able to, to utilize your AMRs also in some kind of collaboration when it comes to, it could be other offset machines or other digital machines, or is that something that is a little bit more tricky? Or? Uh, no, we, we, we have uh, we have several different types of AMRs that we've released. You know, the one that we're the most proud of is our Shark 5 that was really built for uh, integration with the HP Indigos. But um, we also are released the Shark 10 um, and the Shark 15, and these are other formats that are can do things like carry rolls or can carry B1 sheets or can carry okay. um, numerous different sizes. And again, this is built to be a solution for our industry. It's a solution for uh, printing mm -hmm. companies. And we also recognize that, you know, we don't have necessarily a solution for every single type of print that is out there um, in terms of our print technology. But we want to make sure that our solutions live up to their names and that our solutions are applicable for every type of print out there. Mm. Mm. Um, another question, um, is this only for the big boys or, or, or where, what market do you address and, and where do you see, let's say that uh, you're watching this, uh, this uh, interview here and, and say, okay, this is, this is super interesting. Where does it start? I mean, I, there's of course an acquisition cost, but I guess that you have made a lot of calculations also on the ROI or to to find out uh, uh, where what types of companies. So, can you talk about sure. that a little bit? Uh, so, certainly the the big guys are the ones that are very very interested in this, and that's a, that's a fairly easy ROI. But I would say in any environment that's running um, multiple shifts. Uh, can really see advantage okay. here. Uh, you know, what, one of the advantages of the robot is, you know, it works nights without complaining. It works weekends, it works holidays, um, and it will work around the clock 24-7 due to the opportunistic charging that it does. So it's mm -hmm. when you're really working more <clears throat> hours, that's where you see the ROI very quickly on this. Um, if you're just asking a robot to mm -hmm. work eight hours a day, that's you're, you're underutilizing in a big way mm. so just to get it right 100 uh, percent. that basically means that uh, that let's say that you have an indigo machine uh, and and this indigo machine is um, connected uh, with the latest versions of the whatever software needed thing like that does that mean that basically the machine can run autonomously just with the robot feeding paper to it and taking paper and put it in in positions for binding afterwards and basic, you can have a night shift that is uh, unmanned or, I mean, we have always talked about light out production, but is that really the time uh, now? We're, we're easing into it as far as is the, 
is the technology there? Pretty much, but we're, we're, we're easing into that concept. Um, so what, what I like to refer to it now is it's, it's semi-autonomous print, which the, the idea is, is that there should be a person supervising, um, but that mm -hmm. person may be supervising a fleet of robots and these, these robots mm -hmm. can then run, uh, multiple presses and that person is there in case there's any trouble. Um, someone still needs to replace ink, things like that, but, but mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. for moment to moment operation the robot can do most of the work. Mm. In uh, your work, uh, while you develop the, the technology and, and the uh, actual machines uh, together with your partners, uh, what in your perspective was the biggest uh, obstacle or challenge uh, in getting this, uh, everything aligned with where you want it to be? Um, I, I, I would say more, more from a personal perspective. I was just, you know, some. I know that you sometimes are a little bit impatient. You want things to go a little fast, right? And I was just wondering. So I was just thinking, is it? Is I mean, it could be there were some specific little needy thing that could be uh, fun to talk about. Why? Why that was a, a bigger obstacle, right? I was just curious about um, that. You know, it, it's it's been mostly pretty smooth sailing in this uh, process. I mean, the, the fact that we've developed a robot from from the ground up and developed all of the API integrations and everything in truly less than a year um, that's a that's a pretty spectacular uh, speed towards this. Um, again, it really helps having a partner that has met many robots out there and in the field and we, we know their performance and we trust the components and know how that works. And then obviously, you know, we, we are no stranger to custom integrations with our presses. So um, it, it all has gone pretty easily and worked pretty well. I, I would say the, the biggest um, obstacle is just getting, getting the market fully ready for this. Um, we recognize that we're, we're one of the first ones to really push this and talk about it. And anytime that you're on the bleeding edge of, of the market, it's, it's getting everyone interested, but we've gotten a lot of feedback. We, we've gotten more, more interest than, uh, than, than we can even fulfill at the moment. And that's always a good place to be. Uh, HP is, uh huge um, and also sometimes a little bit complex organization um, is this something where you think your colleagues uh, especially on the indigo side has already started to realize that this is a new uh, super potential in the market um, absolutely you know if we've gotten very strong mm. backing all the way through hp on this and mm. um, everything that we're doing here is this is about how to make presses um, easier for customers to operate, easier for customers to get into. So it, it benefits the whole company across the board. And um, at Drupa in Hall 17, I'm sure that you think that uh, your robots are the most important breaking news for HP by all means, right? <laughs> like I said, the, the robots are there to support the presses. And I, I think we all know that in, in any print shop that if you don't have presses printing, then a finishing device can't do anything. The robots can't do anything. The people can't do anything. It's it, in the end, the cylinders need to turn to make the whole thing work. You know, uh, Diego, it's okay when you have a baby to love your baby more than the other children, <laughs> right? So that's why I was asking, right? <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, Diego, uh, it was super interesting to to hear uh, what you are telling, and I think that the implications of what uh, what you and HP are doing right now are maybe beyond comprehension for a lot of people, including myself. Because I mean, you work so closely both when you were on the PSP side and now also on the OEM side that that combination must be uh, almost priceless because you know exactly what is needed on both sides right and 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 i think that is a fantastic so uh congratulations on your and Dave are here and and i'm looking very much forward to see more at, at drupa we didn't have so much time at, at the pre drupa event since we were not part of the d scoop uh, event but i think it was uh, uh, super interesting to see what you have achieved so far and I think you said to me, this is only the oh, beginning, yeah. right? This is all, only the beginning and we, we have much bigger plans in store. Like I said, this is about creating an ecosystem and watch the early adopters. 
This is going to be a revolution in the industry and watch the early adopters. It, it's going to be very interesting. Fantastic. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.